I'm Charity Wicks, and I am the music director here at Central Presbyterian Church in Summit. We are sitting in the sanctuary at the organ console, and I'm going to play a little bit and talk to you a little bit about uh, musical forms and traditions that are American. And this will culminate in an adult education seminar on Sunday, April 7th, following the sanctuary service at 1115. And today I'm going to talk to you about the blues. I think everybody's heard the blues and everybody knows what the blues are, but perhaps we don't know exactly why the blues exist. And I'm here to tell you why and to play you a little example. Blues is a type of music that was that originated in the Deep South around 1870. Um, and it was originated by African Americans and it has roots in African musical traditions as well as African American work songs, spirituals, and the folk music of Americans with European heritage. The blues incorporated spirituals and work songs and field hollers and shouts and chants and rhymed simple narrative ballads. Um, the blues form can be found in jazz and rhythm and blues and later in rock and roll. It's characterized by this call and response pattern as well as the blues scale and specific chord progressions of which the 12 bar blues, which if I were to give examples, which I will later at the adult ed seminar, you might be like, oh, I know what that is. Um, but just a quick example of a blues scale, we've got something like this. Not that high. So I'll talk more about that in a little bit too, but that's an example of the blues scale. Blue notes or worried notes or flatted notes are usually thirds or fifths that are flattened in pitch. So we would normally hear a five note scale and in the blues scale, the third is flat as well as the fifth. So it has that sort of sad, um, longing type of feel. Um, the social and economic reasons for the appearance of the blues are not fully understood, but the first is usually dated uh, shortly after the Emancipation Act of 1863. So that period coincides with the establishment of juke joints where African Americans went to listen to music and to dance after a day's work. This period corresponds to the transition from slavery to sharecropping, small scale agricultural production, and the expansion of railroads in the United States. So a lot of scholars characterize the development of blues in the early 1900s as a move from group performance to individualized performance. So instead of sort of the group slave call and response, now individual performance, which um, is more stylized, uh, as well as arguing that the development of the blues is very closely associated with the newly found freedom, newly acquired freedom of the enslaved people. Despite their conceptual differences now, the gospel, which we know and we've heard a lot of, gospel is the Sunday morning music of the church and the blues was considered the Saturday night music of the juke joints. But they share a lot of the same roots and influences and musical traits, reflecting two sides of the same coin, so to say. The blues and the spirituals flow basically from the same bedrock of experience and neither is an adequate interpretation of African-American life without the other. It's just too, uh, it's just used in two different ways to express that. The influence between religious music and the blues has long been mutual. While both genres have their own distinct characteristics, many gospel songs have been transformed into blues or soul songs and vice versa by simply changing a few words in the lyrics or a couple of sort of uh, harmonic changes. So the piece I'm going to play for you today is very well known hymn tune, Were You There? Uh, appropriate for Lent. 
And this is sort of a blues version. So it is slow and you'll hear some of those flatted thirds and fifths that I was talking about. <laughs> of the blues scale. So take a listen and enjoy, and I will see you next week.